A year ago, almost to the day, this contemporary cottage garden was planted out. It might be a new garden, but it sits beneath a 100-year-old oak tree. I'm Chloe from Been There Dug That. Let's go behind the garden gate. Welcome to Macedon, an hour northwest of Melbourne. It's a lot cooler up here and on this autumnal morning, there's definitely a chill in the air. The sunken space is enhanced by the staggered plantings on the edge, which really draw you down into this space. It invites you in and it tells you it's time to explore. So come on. The garden is turning on all its autumnal colour, not just with the oak tree, but things like grasses. And even I love the fact that they have left the dead seed heads on these plants. This garden was designed and planted out by Tim Pilgrim only one year ago. But as you can see, everything is settling in really well. This is its first real autumn and it's a chance for the owner Virginia to really see this garden change its colours. A lot of people might be quite put off by the dead seed heads being left on, but there really is beauty in the decay of flowers. It adds texture and colour in a completely different way than when this garden is full of blooms. The front entrance to this house really does make it picture perfect. And having a contemporary cottage garden surrounding a traditional cottage makes perfect sense. There's not a lot of plants that were kept from the original garden. These taller wastringias were, and they've been neatly clipped into mounds or clouds to give them a bit of a personality. another sunken space, this time with a fire pit that is completely underneath this big old oak, which is at least 100 years old and really adds personality, atmosphere and age to this new garden space. Even though a lot of the summer flowering perennials have started to fade their flowers, it's still very obvious that there is a cool colour theme going on in this garden. And that is then mixed in with silvers and all the beautiful texture that you get from the grasses as well. It's a really relaxing and calming space to be. Now from the street, I thought these were standard olive trees and Tim said that that often happens, but these are in fact willow leafed pears. Their leaves have a quite distinctive little curl to them and of course they'll lose their leaves in winter as well. Never one to pass up a seat in a garden and from here there is a lovely view of the cottage itself. But likewise, the view back here, you can still see those cool colours in play. And this garden, even though it's in the front yard and we've got the road behind us, it still feels private and that's because of that sunken space here. Really cleverly done. I love this informal path here. We've stepped off the crushed rock and now we're on stepping stones instead. It's playful, it's fun, and it encourages you to explore. This bog sage, even at this time of the year, is such a vibrant blue. It's a real standout. And the echiums here were in the original garden. There was one right behind me, but it's unfortunately died. So perhaps the owner Virginia will replace it with an equally beautiful echium. I can just catch a glimpse of the dark purple that these buddleias would have been throughout summer. Great use of the recycled sleepers here to create a retaining wall and a backing space for this fire pit area.
gosh, wouldn't this be a nice space with the fire roaring? Now from here, you've probably got a really good view of the borrowed landscape that this garden has. And in fact, the house is behind you. So if you're inside the house, not only do you get to enjoy the garden, but also you can enjoy the borrowed landscape beyond. It's really clever. Now this garden is orientated to the east, so that way is east and this way is north. The oak tree of course gives beautiful shade in summer and lets the light in in winter time, but it does create a microclimate. So we've got lots of dry shade beneath the oak here and along this side of the garden as well, which can be a little bit tricky. And Virginia said they have lost a few plants over the last 12 months, but that's to be expected. In a new garden, there's always going to be some successes and some failures. Never mind, gives you a chance to play. Oh, I can spot some of the bulbs emerging from beneath this bed of leaves. Virginia said that this area is full of spring flowering bulbs. There are a number of plants in this area though that are doing really well in this tricky microclimate. I can spot some hellebores and they will naturalise beautifully. There's some ferns, there's some liriopes and one of my favourites, the oak leaf hydrangea. Even though its flowers aren't as big and as bold as the mop top hydrangeas, its leaves are one of its real features. And I mean oak leaf hydrangeas beneath an oak tree, it just works well. It's not just the change in surface that makes this feel like a new garden room. The plants here you'll notice are different to those in the rest of the garden. We've got less silver, there's less height, and it's much more of a woodland vibe in this environment, which ties in really well with the shaded spot. And down here, I can spot one of my favorite little plants. This is a guillaume. And look at those dainty little flowers. This one's the prettiest little antique pink shade. Things like this spreading guillaume, the native violets, the alpine strawberries, and the liriopes will all start to fill in this space so that in the summer months, there will be no bare earth in between the plants and it'll look like a lush green space. I love these seaside daisy borders. They're tough as old boots. They just need a hack back once a year and they keep on keeping on. They're happy in full sun and they're fairly drought tolerant as well. You'll also notice in this space, the use of box hedges. And here they're right up against the house. And when they thicken up like this, they join together to almost completely hide the edge of the deck. And it's like the garden and the house are completely connected. You'll see over here, these ones are yet to fill in. Just look at these hydrangeas putting on a show with their autumn colour and it's really nice to leave the flower heads on the hydrangeas like this throughout autumn. They will fade and then they will turn brown and they actually look really, really pretty. The dahlias are a new obsession for Virginia, but she better watch out because she's gonna need more than those. Now the backyard space which we're going to explore hasn't been designed by Tim yet and it's still a work in progress. But let's go and see and I'll show you some of Virginia's ideas for the space. There's a nice big lawn space for their dog to run around in, which is just perfect. Some veggie beds, because of course we need those. And there's a sweet little potting shed down the back for all the tools and bits and bobs. You'll notice that there's a bit of a hole in the garden back here behind the bench seat. And there used to be a large water tank, which dominated the backyard space. Virginia's had that removed and she's got dreams of inserting a beautiful glass house into the space instead. Aren't these bay trees huge? And there's even a citrus tree in here. And these are doing a great job of hiding the shed behind it. Behind you is the kitchen window. So if they weren't there, you'd be looking out the kitchen window at a great big silver shed. But this is much nicer, a great big green wall instead. Ah, 
aha, I think I can spot a few more dahlias. <laughs> I knew she wouldn't be able to stop at just one or two. Now with all these oak leaves that this tree is giving her every autumn, it's really important to have a composting system. And back here, there's a four bay composting system, which allows her to churn through a lot of green waste material over time. Really worthwhile if you've got the space for it. I've also just spotted some espaliered apples along this side of the fence. So they're not massive yet, but when they fill in, they're gonna be a really productive addition to the backyard. You'll notice here as well that there's a lot of silvery plants in here. Seaside daisies, lamb's ears, and some catmint. And these plants you actually see in the front yard as well. So having that repetition from the front yard to the backyard helps to connect the two spaces, even though at the moment they're very different. Having lived most of her life in a much warmer climate, Virginia wasn't even really sure of what plants would work in this region. And when she enlisted the help of Tim Pilgrim, she really just knew that she wanted a garden that tied in nicely with the era of the house, so a cottage garden. But ultimately, she's got a garden that changes throughout the seasons so she can enjoy it year round. And honestly, it belongs on the cover of a magazine. In the depths of winter, when all the deciduous trees have lost their leaves, it'll be time to give the grasses and the perennials a hard cut back. And then, come spring, everything will be ready to burst back into life. I hope this garden has inspired you to consider the moods and the changes in the seasons, and plant plants that look good at different times of the year. Let me know in the comments below which part of this garden has been the most inspirational for you. Don't forget to like and subscribe because I've got plenty more garden tours coming your way. I'll see you next time.